But I was thinking about the story and what I wanted to tell here today. And before I was uh, writing my story, I thought, okay, what really is Beyond the Horizon? And what do I want to tell you guys today about uh, reaching Beyond the Horizon and going Beyond the Horizon? And when I was thinking about that and my own story, I realized that to actually go Beyond the Horizon, I think it's very important to take a step back and look at yourself where you're standing and see uh, where you're standing in the world and the people around you to actually be able to have a legit estimate to see how far you can go and how far you want to go. And in order to develop that sense of consciousness of yourself and where you're standing, I think it's very important to be very open-minded and be open for other things to see, well, what you guys are doing here today, to be open to actually listen to my story and the stories uh, before me. So I think that's very good, so that's good. But um, So in order to uh, develop that sense of consciousness to see where you're standing today and uh, how far you can go, I think it's important to be open-minded, to be open for everything you see around yourself and uh, to take the risk, uh, to, to be willing to take risks um, that may lead you to uh, many different places. So why am I standing here today? So I was asked to tell my own story on how I broadened my own horizon because, uh, yeah, I'm obviously moving to California in a few months, which is on the other side of the horizon, standing from a, from a point of view from here. Um, so how I got to that point and how I developed that passion to, to go there and how, uh, yeah, how the road um, yeah, what the road was like. So first of all, when I was younger, I, um, I didn't really like school, I didn't really like the teachers and everything that, I, that was taught in school, which may sound a little contradictory to uh, going to Stanford, but uh, I didn't really like school, so I liked to skateboard a lot. So I was all the time skateboarding in, my fr in front of the door in my street and trying to find new spots in my neighborhood. And I was always very sad because there weren't really any cool spots around me to, uh, to skateboard. I thought all the cool spots were in California because all the skateboard films were recorded there and everybody was surfing there and everything was going on there. So I was like, okay, I should really go out there. But anyway, so I was skateboarding a lot and in this big skateboard hall in Amsterdam, it was an indoor skateboard hall, there were all these cool skateboarders and they were always listening to music while skateboarding, which may sound very dangerous, but for me that was the kind of uh, symbol to be a good skateboarder. Well, because when you're a good skateboarder, you listen to music while skateboarding because everything else doesn't matter. And you're a skateboarding and you're, yeah, so you're the cool skateboarder. So what I was doing is, uh, so I, I took my iPod from my dad and I didn't really have a sense of technology or whatever was going on in that field. So uh, I took the iPod from my dad and went skateboarding with my, iPod, with my dad's iPod, which he obviously didn't really like because it was his new iPod and I was skateboarding and I was falling and I was trying new things um, with his new iPod. So I asked one for, Chris, for Christmas and uh, after a lot of asking, I finally got one and that was my very first touch with Apple's products and what, what Apple does in the, in, the, in the field of technology. And when I saw those products, I was kind of amazed by how stylish it looked and how it worked and it, it worked so well and I was really astonished by that. So um, later on, I bought an iPod Touch for myself and I saw, okay, this is really weird because Apple really likes to have the control in their own hands, but now they are letting other people build software for their devices. So I was like, what's going on here? And because I had such a passion for Apple, I thought, okay, maybe this is my chance to, in retrospect, to, um, to take part in this Apple community or the, the Apple idea. So I just started experimenting on the internet with building iPhone apps and just random things, just combining some things and learning a little bit to program iPhone apps. And as soon as I really got the, uh, un understood the tools, I, uh, I built my first app and published it in the App Store. And it wasn't really world changing, but it was just for me a way to, to express my creativity and just do something I like to do. And looking backwards, it really was my way to broaden my horizon because just from my, uh, for, from my bedroom, I was just programming with my computer on my, on my desk. And from there, I, yeah, I opened the doors of entrepreneurship and a whole new world besides the, the little city of Harlem I live in. So that was really how I brought up my horizon. And um, on top of that, how I really learned to build those iPhone apps, it was because, um, because my parents didn't have any idea what I was doing. <laughs> the first time I think they really understood what I was doing was when I launched my first app in the App Store and they were receiving texts from friends like, hey, this app is in the App Store, what's going on with your kid? So <laughs> that was, so it was, all, it was all trying to find out on the internet, trying to 
uh, trying to see videos and just do what they were doing in the videos. And that's how it really worked. And that's when I, uh, when I first got this touch with Stanford University, because I had really no idea about universities or actually going to university. I was just you know, trying to, to do what I like to do on the internet. And Stanford happened to be in that way. Because what they did is they have, uh, they have videos. They have classes, obviously, in school. And they record their videos, their college classes. And these videos, they put them online, uh, open for everyone, for everyone to broaden their horizon. And that's what I did. I saw those videos and just replicated everything they were doing in order to, uh, to have it on my own computer. And as soon as I, um, as I had those, uh, as I watched those videos and uh, developed that, uh, that understanding of building iPhone applications and put my first app in the App Store, Apple started noticing me and they thought, okay, what is this little kid doing? Why is he building iPhone apps and why, is, why are those apps online? Like, wh what is he doing? We need, to, we need to talk to this kid. So I received this email from uh, a guy named John uh, from California, from Apple in Cupertino. And, well, you know, that was kind of my dream to happen because this was like, it was so direct. And then uh, he was like, hey, I'm in, uh, at Schiphol Airport in a few weeks, so would you like to meet up? So I was like, okay, sure thing, that sounds very cool. <laughs> and I met him there and we talked for like three or four hours on the airport about like Apple and passion and all those things and entrepreneurship and app development and how it worked in the future of technology. So that was really inspiring. And then after two weeks, I received an email from him asking me to, if I could attend two conferences, one in New York City and one in San Francisco. And I was like, okay, this is getting a little crazy because I'm just experimenting with app development. I'm just mixing up code from the internet and just trying to uh, to, to write some code myself, and now people are asking me to come over to the other side of the ocean to attend a conference with a lot of Apple developers. So that was really weird, but you know, it was cool. So I said, yeah, sure, thank you so much. It sounds like such an amazing opportunity. And uh, I met many new people there who I still talk w uh, with today. And, uh, but be because I was on the, just around the corner of Stanford, I was like, okay, maybe I should just go to this university and see what it's like to actually be there because you know, I learned so much from that university and what they were doing there. Uh, so I went there and I was like, okay, this is just like all the movies and this seems to be like a university or how school should be like. And that's when I really shifted my focus from app development to getting into Stanford because I had no idea how the American college system works. Uh, my high school has no idea either, so I had to figure out myself. But Eventually, um, I got into a summer school, and I saw that the openness and the freedom to share everything there, and your ideas, whether, whether you were thinking of making millions out of it or not, is really what makes the area so unique, and what I think everyone should be doing, and what we're doing here today, the, the freedom to share your own idea. And that's when I really thought, okay, this is my place to be, and I really want to go here, no matter whether my grades suck or not, I'm going to work very hard to get here. So that's what I was doing, and uh, I put my apps on uh, on a sidetrack and focused on uh, on my admission to Stanford, and that's what eventually worked out. So that's I'm very happy about that to to go there and have the opportunity to to get there, and for Stanford that they gave me that chance to to uh, to start school there. But in the end, I think it's very important that looking back at what I learned from the whole experience, if I can say that, if I can say it's it's like a big experience that. I really learned to, to be open for many new things and always take a step back to see, okay, where am I standing right now? What do I need to, to do to, uh, to take that extra step forward um, without getting lost in, 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 in the view of the horizon, right? So I think that's very, uh, very important to do and that, I think that's my takeaway for today. Um, so be open for everything and make sure that to to get to move steps forward, it's very important to actually take steps backwards to see where you're standing and see, okay, where do I want to go? So, thank you.